Coach Saban said yesterday that, that your secondary is a lot like the Seattle Seahawks. So what's it like going up against those guys every day in practice? Uh, well, I think it prepares you know, play um, in the upcoming week. Um, whether, how, whether they're good as our secondary or not, um, just because we feel like we're seeing the best, um, I think we, we um, prepare very well for the game that we're going to play in. Okay. Over here on the left, Paul. Uh, for all the guys up there or anyone who wants to comment, uh, Paul Newberry from Associated Press. Um, you know, obviously Alabama has this reputation uh, for defense and what they've done under Coach Saban. What do you see when you look at them on film and, you know, this sort of belief they're sort of you can't move the ball against them no matter how good offense you have. Uh, what do you all see and do you see vulnerabilities there that you can take advantage of? Miles, let's start with you, please. Oh. Um. Oh, what is that? One more time, can you say that again? I, I stopped focusing. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> My bad. I, I thought it was for everybody. So I was just, oh, talk about the Alabama defense. Oh. Um, they, they're a fast defense. Sorry about that. Um, fast. They're smart. Everybody runs to the ball. I mean, they give 100% each play. I mean, it's much different from any team I think we've ever played against. Uh, sometimes you can see a D lineman kind of just trotting down the field, but everybody's running to the ball. I mean, they play smart D, and uh, they all just uh, give 100% each play, and, uh, and that's just different than we've ever seen. Dante, your thoughts on the Alabama defense? Like Miles was saying, they're, you know, they play hard. Um, they're fast. Their DBs are, are pretty big. Um, they're physical. Uh, you know, it's, it's, their defense is uh, kind of like ours. Um, you know, it's going to be fun to go against, to go against them. Jake? Yeah, I think, um, uh, like these guys are saying, I don't think there's a, a front seven as talented that we faced this year. So it's going to be a challenge for us. But we were studying. Uh, we're studying them and, and seeing what we're going to be able to do to, to be able to move them and, and create holes for these guys. All right, John? Um, I think these guys kind of like summed it up pretty good. Um, re very good defense. Uh, um, we definitely haven't seen a defense like this, um, and it'll be awesome to play these guys coming Saturday. All right, we'll go. Okay, over here in the middle on the left. Charles Little with AP. Um, this is for, for Miles and Dante. Um, you guys have said all kind of passing records this season, but you just showed in the Colorado game what you can do when, when the passing game isn't working. Can you talk about that balance and what it means for you guys to, to keep, the, to keep the, the defenses on us with your running game? Um, it's just uh, one of those things you kind of you feel good about sometimes. I mean, we had a great year passing the ball. I mean, Jake, John, and uh, Dante, everybody was just doing – Great, and uh, O-line was holding up, pass pro and everything like that, but sometimes things fall through, I guess. And sometimes things don't just, just don't go the way it's planned, and knowing that we could run the ball felt good. And I mean, it's one of those things where it's a good, uh, just a good thing to have, being able to run the ball and throw the ball, so. Tante? Yeah, it's definitely good to have a, a balance of run and pass. Uh, you know, there's a lot of teams that can only pass the ball. There's a lot of teams that can only run the ball. And so it is good when one thing isn't working, you can always resort to the other. This is for Jake, Chantel Jennings with ESPN. Earlier this season, a pit offensive lineman ran for a touchdown, and yesterday Coach Pete joked that after that happened, a bunch of the offensive linemen texted him and were like, hey, are we going to do that this year? Were you one of those offensive linemen? Um, I wasn't one of the ones that texted him, but I'm, I'm definitely the ones that should have. So I, uh, I think every offensive lineman wants to be able to run for a touchdown. These guys get to do it all the time. So. <laughs> With the trick plays, I mean, are the offensive linemen sort of thinking like, when's when's our moment to shine? Uh, yeah, but I think I think when you play offensive line, you kind of know that you don't have that many of those moments. So. Right, where are we going next, guys? Okay, over here in the uh, right side, middle, please. Taryn Walk with the Tuscaloosa News. This is geared toward Dante and John. What stands out most to you about Alabama's defensive backs, and how do you plan to go up against them? Uh, I think the physicality piece, um, like Dante said earlier, pretty uh, bigger, bigger guys than we've seen um, this year. Um, but I, I think we got a good scheme. Um, I think our coaches are doing a very good job of preparing us for this game, and it'll be cool to see. Yeah, I mean they're 
they're pretty big. Um, they're they're strong, fast. Uh, they're they're a good group of DBs. But uh, like Ross was saying earlier, you know, we go against Sidney Jones and uh, Kevin King every single day, and so uh, I think they prepare us pretty well for for what we're gonna see. All right, where are we going next, guys? Okay, we'll go over here in the third row left. Hi, guys. Jeff Spiegel, WBMA Birmingham. This is for John and also for Dante. Uh, John, how satisfying has it been to have a year like you've had this year coming off the injury? And uh, I guess more for Dante, how advantageous is it to have two guys on the outside who are as good as you guys are? Uh, well, I'm, I just, I'm just thankful and I uh, feel blessed to be in a position that I am in with this team and you know just coming off of something like that is kind of hard to do. Um, uh, we got a good training staff and they you know prepared me for this and like I said I can just only be thankful and uh, you know happy at the, in the situation that we all are in. Yeah no it's definitely good to see uh, Ross where he is right now um, especially like you said coming off of injury um, and I think it's it does a lot when you have someone like him that can kind of open up the defense, uh, whether it's for you know me or for Chico or Miles. You know, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. If, uh, you have to pay attention, uh, pay a little bit more attention to one person that opens everything up for for other people. All right, time for a few more. We're okay over here, left side, Paul, please. Hey, for uh, Dante, I was I was kind of talking to you a little bit beforehand about your father, and you were talking about some of the things he taught you off the field, um, you know, to help you in, in your game. I guess that he, I'm assuming he played probably high school football at least. Mm -hmm. uh, can he? Does he pass along any tips football wise? And as a baseball coach, I don't know. Does that translate when he's maybe trying to tell you anything on football? Uh, he thinks he can, but for I mean, <laughs> he you know he he's a baseball guy, so. Uh, he definitely knows football really well, but um, some of the stuff doesn't really translate. Um, he's he's a good athlete though, so he knows he knows what he's talking about for for the most part. Um, he doesn't really try to tell me what to do too much. All right, where are we going next, guys? Anybody in the back? Okay, back here to row three, please. Alabama won the SEC championship. Mostly in dominating fashion, you guys won the Pac-12, you know, mostly in dominating fashion, yet you guys are two touchdown underdogs. I was wondering if all of you could address how the team felt when they saw that point spread and maybe how that motivates you in this game. Right. John, start with you, please. I didn't even know. We didn't hear about that, um, actually. Um, I just feel like, you know, this, in this game, it don't matter what people say, um, you can be – a hundred point underdog, whatever. At the end of the day, you still got to go out and play, um, and that's our focus. Not focus on what the spread is or, or what, you know, people who are not playing say. You know, um, our only focus is to, our, is in practice and you know, buying into what our coaching is saying in our scheme. Yeah, like John was saying, um, I didn't see it either. I mean, like, but. People are going to write what they want to write and say what they want to say. I mean, it's like that's cool. I mean, y'all, that's, that's somebody else's job, and uh, we don't buy into that. Our job is to play football. Other people's job is just to write stuff down, so whatever. Dante? Yeah, I was talking about that earlier. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter what they say the, the spread is. You know, we still – both teams have to come, up, come out and play. Uh, and so, really, the only spread that matters is what the you know what the scoreline says after the game. So we don't really care too much about what the what the spread is. All right, Jake. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just glad we still play the game at the end of the day because if it goes up to the media, I don't think we'd, uh, we'd have a chance. But I think uh, it's it's, uh, it's the nice thing about football is is once you once you start the game, everything is, is on equal playing. So, yeah. All right, time for a few more. Where are we going next, guys? Okay, right here in the front, please. Adrian Beecher with the Skyboat. 
That's for all of you. That loss to USC, how much of a positive impact do you guys feel like it had on your season as a chance to really kind of see the things you guys needed to improve on and kind of give you that feeling that you're not completely unstoppable and now that you have to go up against Alabama? Well, I think mostly we stopped ourselves that game. Um, I don't think we played as good as we have all season on offense, offensively that game. So um, I think that helped us, you know, um, like you said, prepare for other games um, where we need to improve and where our weaknesses was and, you know, what not to do against a very good, you know, talented defense like that. So um, I think those kind of games are the games you learn from and you take in and you get better from there. Miles? Um, just kind of gave us that, hey, like, I mean, just, hey, we need to come back next week and the following week and after that. Like, we need to prove ourselves now because, I mean, I feel like people are kind of trying to push us out the playoff. And after that loss, kind of just gave us that fire that, hey, we need to each, win each game from here on out with, like, dominance and, like, no chance for everything like that. So I feel like it just kind of gave us that fire to go out and finish the rest of the season like we did. It definitely gave us a little bit more edge. Uh, it, it, it had been a while since we felt that feeling you know, after the game where you come in the locker room and everyone's like, man, what just happened, kind of. Um, and so I definitely think it, it, looking back on it, it was probably a good thing. Um, we obviously would have liked to, to have won that game. But um, uh, yeah, it, it, I think it gave us a little bit more edge, like, OK, we're, we're not going to feel that way again. Yeah, I think on top of all that, it just gave us a chance to regroup as a team go back and study what we were doing wrong and try and fix that. All right, next question, please. All right, back up here, row three, please. I just want to go back to the, uh, to the trick play question uh, from a while ago and just talk about how uh, exciting it is, I guess, when you hear one of those plays called and how good it feels to execute it like uh, you did earlier this year, Dante. Uh, I mean, you put all these trick plays in, and you honestly only end up running maybe one a game. Um, I know Coach Pete always has this huge, uh, you know, thing. Like everyone thinks he runs, you know, ten trick plays a game, but in reality, we probably run one or two if, if we're lucky. Um, and so, you know, we'll have all these ones in, and. Um, I, you always get really excited when, when they're your trick play, and then you never end up running it. And so it's, it's kind of it's, it's funny because you, uh, I was joking with Coach Hamden about the, the double pass uh, early in the year. I was like, we're never, we're never going to run this play, so uh, I don't know why we're going over it. And then sure enough, that game we called it. And so um, it's, it's definitely it's, it's a fun thing to, to be a part of.